Okay, so I'm making a bit of a change to the workflow going forward for the next group of videos in this series. So in the previous videos, I've been using this helper file called decipher.js that I just put up on GitHub and include in the show notes to each episode. This is getting a little bit cumbersome to deal with. So I went and I extracted that entire helper file into a NPM module that you can install locally on your machine as a command line interface, and we can use that for the videos going forward, and I think this is gonna be a much better workflow. So let me show you how this is going to work. So on your machine, you should be able to npm install dash g and then decipher tv, which is going to be the name of the module. And now each episode, I will put up a new version of this module because it's going to be under active development and I'm going to be changing things constantly. So if you just do decipher tv at 0 0.1 and then the um, the number of the episode. For example, this is episode number 14, so you could do 0.1.14. And if you install this, you'll get the exact helper file that I will use in the screencast. So it should be very easy to follow along. And let me show you what this helper file does and why I think it's going to be good for the workflow going forward. So once it's installed, um, I'm going to run our test RPC down here. And I can start the command line shell into test RPC just by doing decipher dash M dash M is going to stand for mode and then test RPC. So this will start our command line interface and it'll have all our globals loaded. So I could just do like account one and I could do decipher dot ether balance account one to see the ether balance of that, et cetera, et cetera. And that's kind of exactly what we've been doing in the previous videos, but where this is going to get interesting is interacting with the testnet and the mainnet because most Ethereum libraries that exist today and the Ethereum frameworks that exist today are relying on you to be running your own node locally to interact with the testnet and the mainnet. So we're not going to get to setting up our own node for at least like another 10 videos. So just in the meantime, it'll be really helpful to use the utilities that I've written in this library to just make create contracts on the testnet and interact with them. So let me show you how that would work. So I can do decipher dash M and instead of typing in test RBC, I'll type in Robston for the test network and then dash I, which is going to be the key pair that I have from Infura. So if you haven't signed up for Infura, you should, you'll get a key pair that looks something like that. I will hit enter. And then it's going to ask me to enter my private key. So I'm going to paste in a private key and then it's going to start my REPL, but now it knows how to sign transactions to send to remote nodes so that I don't need to be running my own node to interact with the actual testnet. So for example, I can do decipher.account and I can see that this is the account that I'm now like logged in with in this command line utility. And if we wanted to create and deploy a contract onto the testnet very quickly, um, we could do something like this. So I'm going to create a very simple contract just in a string here, contract, hello world, function display message constant returns string and then this will just return hello world from a test net contract so if i wanted to deploy that contract i could just do var contract equals decipher dot create contract and then pass in the contract. And then I could pass in any parameters that I wanted to call the contract with. We don't need to do that in this case or override a specific value. For example, I could give it, you know, exactly 1 million gas if I wanted to. And then this will actually deploy that contract onto the testnet. Here is a etherscan link for the testnet address. So I can go to that right now. And I can see that I have this pending transaction that I just made. And we're going to wait for the contract to be created and then it'll give us our contract address and then we can go ahead and sync the local copy of that contract we have to the address okay so this contract is deployed now and we have an address and i'm going to copy that and go back into my terminal and i will say var deployed equals contract dot at and then pass in the address of the contract and now we should have a reference to this actual deployed contract on the testnet and do deployed dot display message call that function and we'll get hello world from a testnet contract. And this is, you know, on the testnet deployed and we didn't need to run a node. We just needed to use a simple command line tool.
So I'm going to be constantly changing this library and constantly testing things out and constantly making improvements. But I think just being able to sync the CLI at the beginning of each episode and then you have exactly the same code that I'm running when I'm filming it will be a pretty good workflow going forward. And as I slowly make improvements to it, the tool might actually be useful for your own hacking if you just want to be able to quickly deploy things onto the testnet and the mainnet without having to run your own node.